Hello my lovely friends, my name is Ava and I have some monster paranormal romances that will definitely put you in the October spooky season. This is a wonderful collaboration with Tori over at Novel Life. Um, she's doing more of the like spooky witchy route and I'm doing more of the like monster creature route. Be sure to go check out Tori's video if you want more like paranormal witchy reads. Um, but yeah, I have eight monster romances to share with you that I would totally recommend to somebody who wants to read something a little bit monstery creature spooky-ish during, um, is that even a sentence, right? Was that even a good sentence? I don't know. Anyway, <laughs> um, I recommend these books to anybody who wants to get into the spooky season by reading a monster romance. I can't wait to watch Tori's video because I haven't read personally a lot of witch romances, so I definitely need more in my life. Um, so yeah, if you want to read some monster books, let's get into these recommendations. I have recommended all these books on my channel before, uh, but these are specifically geared towards like if you want to get into the spooky paranormal mood. One that I think fits this season so well is Sweet Vengeance by Viano Onimo. When I think about it though, I just thought about this though, I think the heroine Joy is a witch because she summons Malachi this demon. Um, anyway, so Joy, I think she's a witch. So I think that fills, I think I just didn't notice that she was also a witch. Anyway, um, she is a woman who has been scorned and dealt with trauma no woman should ever experience. And she wants revenge on the man who did this horrible, horrible thing to her. So she decides to summon a revenge demon to act out her revenge. Malachi has been summoned to help Joy with her revenge. Um, and he's very, very, very into this woman who has all this pent up vengeance inside of her and lets it out in like the best ways possible. Um, and it is super emotional at raw points too. So just be aware of that. There is trigger warning for previous essay. Um, and she does confront her assaulter. Malachi is also keeping Joy at a distance because when the revenge is over with, he goes back to where he was summoned from. And how can they continue on their relationship if he isn't there for a job. This one is fam freaking tastic if you want a short, hot read with a plus size main character woman who absolutely loves every single aspect of herself. Like I loved that. One of my favorite monster romances is Assault to Keep by Opal Rain. This cover just screams spooky season to me. Like yes, I love this one. It is a little bit on the longer side so if you're wanting to read like a longer book to read throughout October. I definitely recommend this one. This one's about Rhea and Orpheus and in this world, I don't know if it's our world or if it's a fantasy realm. I don't know. It's very different from ours. Basically, um, in this world, you have humans, you have demons who eat humans to survive and get stronger. And then you have dusk walkers and other magical creatures. Orpheus in here is a dusk walker and he basically inhabits, like it's the characteristics and features of whatever he eats. Um, so that's why he looks the way he does, um, cause he's consumed quite a few things. Um, and that's why he looks the way he does. Anyway, so Rhea is a human woman and she lives in this village who has this magical boundary put around it from demons. So demons don't attack or kill them. Um, but the only way they're able to keep that magical boundary is I think either once a year, oh, once every 10 years, I'm so sorry. Once every 10 years, they have to give the person who created the boundary a payment a bride. So Orpheus is the person, the creature with magic who's able to put a boundary around this village and in exchange they give Orpheus a bride. Rhea this year has been chosen against her will to go with Orpheus and be Orpheus's bride. Now you would think that means that Orpheus is stealing all these women and wanting all these brides and no. All he wants his whole life, he's like basically immortal. He's been living for years alone and he wants a companion he wants someone to share life with he's so lonely and he's tried for years to find that companionship to find somebody who just wants to be with him because it's him and like oh he, he he like loves so deeply and wants to be loved so badly um but there have been previous brides where um there's been some complications because uh he's eaten a few or he's uh 
few few of them have run away and they get eaten by other demons. Um, he has not had the greatest luck. Um, and so Rhea at first tries to run away, um, but then she quickly realizes like Orpheus is not what she originally thought, and she slowly starts to fall in love with this cinnamon roll of a ghoulish creature. <laughs> There's trigger warning here for animal death, blood gore, and killing, so please be aware of that. But I adore this one and I definitely need to read more in the series. I think there's like five books out right now and I haven't continued on with the series. I've only read book one, um, but they're just so long. I have to like really set aside a lot of time to read them, especially since there's no audio version, um, but they're just, they're, this one was really good. So I assume all the other ones are gonna be good as well. Next is The Beast by Jenica Snow. Now, um, I know that Tori actually does not like this book, so. <laughs> Sorry, Tori. Um, but uh, Brie from In Love and Words and I actually buddy read this book and we had so much fun. We had so much fun. This is basically a Beauty and the Beast retelling, but if the Beast is like a beast the entire time, he doesn't turn into a human. And basically he um, overhears that uh, Belle's dad um, is in a lot of debt. So he gets in debt, like he takes the debt over or whatever. And is like, I'll forgive your debt if you give me your daughter. Cause he's been like, stalking her and um wants her and uh she is stuck in the castle with him and they fall for each other <laughs> and he's basically it's basically beauty the beast but like hot and he's a beast the whole time so also sorry if you hear noises um we have kittens inside right now and they are running around running around like crazy so um Sorry for all the noise. Um, but this is a really fun, quick read. It definitely gives me like dark, mysterious vibes like Beauty and the Beast does in general. Um, but it, it's got a monster creature as the beast. So if you want to read a whole series, but you want more of like a cozier vibe, I recommend the Leviathan Fitness series by Ashley Bennett. So I'm going to talk about the first one, which is uh, Muscles and Monsters. There's also Tentacles and Triathlons and Mantras and Minotaurs. So those are the three books currently out right now. They're like climbing up furniture. <laughs> anyway, so Muscles and Monsters is the first book in the series. And basically this takes place in a town um, where on earth where um, monsters and humans live together in harmony. Like monsters own homes and own businesses and live like humans do. So Tegan and Atlas are two main characters and Tegan is a bakery owner. Um, and she's been tasked to bake this wedding cake. But while she's taking it to her truck outside, it kind of like splat, one of the layers splats on the um the sidewalk in front of her building um, while she was trying to put it in the truck. And Atlas just happens to be walking down the street. He is the wolf creature you see on the cover and he owns Leviathan Fitness, which is the gym down the street from her. He ends up helping her clean up her cake mess. She takes him back to the bakery to help clean him off because he's covered in cake. Um, and they have a little bit of a connection after that. And Tegan decides to go join Leviathan Fitness. It's normally a gym filled with monsters, but Alice is really wanting to encourage humans to come to because it isn't just a gym for monsters. He wants it to be a gym for everybody. So Tegan decides to get a membership there because she wants to become stronger. She's like, I shouldn't have dropped that cake. I should have been strong enough to hold the cake. So she's gonna join the gym to get stronger, but it's also a little bit of an excuse to possibly get to know Atlas a little bit more um, because she is very interested in him. Like she was interested in him right off the bat and he's so stinking cute. He, every time he sees Tegan, his tail wags, like he can't control his tail. And so like, he could be like stoic, like on the outside, like while well, he's watching her train or whatever. Um, but his tail is going like a million miles a minute because his tail like can't, can't hide his feelings for this beautiful stunning woman. So um, this is a fun read. Definitely like cute but hot read. Like whew, these books, all the books in the series, cute but hot vibes. If you're wanting that, definitely pick these up. Next I have Deceived by the Gargoyles by Lillian Lark. This is an MMMF kind of? kind of, um, <laughs> romance book. Um, so we're in here, she is a witch and she decides to go to a paranormal matchmaker and asks her to set her up with her soulmate basically. And if she goes out on a date with this guy, he seems pretty ordinary, but she really has a strong connection with him and she's starting to really like him. Little does she know that that's actually a glamour. That's not who the man actually looks like. He's actually a gargoyle and he has like this human looking glamour on him. And she also doesn't know that he already has two gargoyle mates along with him and he wants her to join their family. So that's all I'm going to leave you with that one. If you want hot, 
hot, hot times. You definitely should pick this one up. Next, I have The Orcs Bride by Layla Faye. I know I've talked about Layla Faye's books and that she writes a lot of um, like monster romance novellas. This one is fairly short compared to like other full-length books out there. It is 147 pages, which is actually probably one of the longest books Layla has written compared to her other novellas. Um, so take with that what you will. So um, this is also the first book in a trilogy about the same couple. So anyway, this one's about Una and Ergen. So Ergen is an orc general and he lives in this fantasy realm with all those other orc people and there's also humans. And he has been told by the orc emperor, like, I want you to marry my daughter. Ergen does not like that daughter. She th He thinks she's stuck up, like doesn't want to marry her. So he's like, okay, um, I'm on this mission and I got to figure out how to not marry this orc woman. Like, I don't want to be with her. So he's like contemplating this and he's seeing his uh, soldiers being served by some humans, um, by uh, Una specifically. And she's very much stands her own um, to these orcs who are trying to maybe like grope her or touch her in some way. And she's like, like, she's very firm with them. And he's like, Ooh, okay. She's intriguing me. Let me bring her in. And like, he has one conversation with her and realizes like, Ooh, I feel like the spicy little human would make an amazing wife. And so he tells her like, okay, you're going to come with me. We're going to travel back to the empire, um, to the empire where, uh, the emperor is. Um, cause I'm summoned back over there. And on our journey there, I'm going to convince you to marry me. And she's like, okay, um, good luck with that. We'll see what happens. He doesn't know that she internally is saying like, okay, this is the perfect opportunity for me to go to the empire because I want to try and kill the emperor. This is a perfect opportunity. I'm not going to tell him that though because she hates orcs because they killed her whole family. So um, if you want like an orcish read, this definitely has like darker elements to it. There's dying, there's killing, there's gore, there's blood. So like be aware of that. One of my favorite ones to recommend during the Halloween spooky season is His Darkest Craving by Tiffany Roberts. I talk about this book all the freaking time. I cannot help it. This one actually does take place, part of the book takes place on Halloween. So that's like an added bonus. This is the romance between Sophie and Cruz. So Sophie is a human woman who I think just went through a divorce and she is wanting some alone time to work on, I think she's the writer of her novel. And so she decides to rent a cabin on the edge of this very mysterious deep dark wood, okay? Um, and she's gonna work on her novel there. Little does she know that there is an entity, a shadow entity, if you will, um, that has been cursed and lives in the woods and has been tasked to protect it. And he has killed every human he has ever come across. So he's fully prepared to kill this human. Go, like his shadow entity goes into her cabin, is looming over her in bed. He's like staring at her and he's like, I can't do it. He's like, why can't I kill this human? Like, I want to kill this. Why can't I do it? He ends up watching her from afar um, and ends up falling for her. Um, so yeah, this shadow entity ends up falling for a human woman. So you wouldn't think that a shadow entity and uh, a human romance would be hot, but it gets there. Anyway, the Halloween aspect that plays into this one is um, Cruz is actually cursed into this shadow entity except once a year. And I think on Halloween night is when he can get into his physical fey form. Um, so that's what like the cover looks like, the physical guy you see on the cover. Um, that is what he's able to look like on Halloween. So, And lastly, I have another Tiffany Roberts book. I just recently read this one and I really enjoyed it. So I definitely recommend it. This is Yearning for Her by Tiffany Roberts. This is a incubus one. I think that's the male equivalent to a succubus. I think that's what it's called. Um, like an incubus one. Um, he has wings and stuff. It's really fun. So this is about Willow and Kian. So Willow at the beginning of this book starts out with very much being in love with her boyfriend. Um, but then she quickly dumps him after she realized how much of a garbage human being he is. <laughs> and after the breakup that night, uh, she ends up meeting Kian and needs to blow off some steam. And he is more than happy to like, be her tool to do that um and they have an amazing night together but willow sneaks out the next morning before kian wakes up because she doesn't want to do like the awkward like oh i woke up with somebody i don't know thing you know what willow doesn't know though is that kian is actually incubus he's had like a glamour on this whole time he actually has like really sharp teeth and glowing eyes and wings and he's like 400 yeah 400 years old and his whole entire life no human has been able to satiate his hunger like Willow just did. Normally he has to like feed off of lust in some form, um, like every hour or so. Like he goes to a lot of dancing clubs where he's able to like, just like see people lust after each other that feeds his lust, you know? Um, sometimes he even like hooks up with people, that's how he feeds his lust. But it's like a continuous thing. Like he constantly has to feed himself or like be fed in some other way. And um, Willow 
and him have that night together and he is like fed and like not hungry for a whole week and then when he real when that wears off he can't get like he starts falling apart because he's not able to combat his like hunger from anyone else anymore like he can't do it like like nothing will feed him except finding willow he, she didn't leave her name she didn't leave her phone number so he's just literally walking the streets becoming like this husk of a creature because like he's so hungry because like he's just walking the streets trying to find this woman he eventually does so don't worry um but i was absolutely obsessed with kian like he was absolutely obsessed with willow i love a man that is absolutely obsessed clingy as crap to their woman like i love it and he basically tells her like in the 400 years that i've been alive i know nothing about love i've never really needed love i don't know how to love but for you i would be willing to learn like teach me please and Oh, I love him. The paranormal aspects of this book were super cool. I love like the incubus aspects as well. So um, definitely would put you in like the spooky paranormal vibe for Halloween season. The cat is literally climbing the bed behind me or behind the camera. Sorry for all the noises. The cats are being absolutely ridiculous. They decide to rough house really late at night <laughs> when I decide to film. Anyway, um, thank you all so much for watching this video. Let me know down below if you have read any of these books or if you plan to, and if you don't feel like commenting any of those things, you can leave me like the red monster emoji in the comment section down below. And be sure again to go check out Tori's video for some witchy paranormal romances. Anyways, thank y'all so, so much for watching. I will see y'all soon in my next one. Bye y'all.